This video is a step-by-step -step tutorial for making a quilted dark coat. I like to look at the website of the local fabric store which supplies to all the sewing needs. By doing that a lot of time is saved like not having to wait for a pattern book and you can make a list in advance of what to buy because a picture of the back of the pattern envelope with all the information on is also provided and if you already have the measurements for the project you would know how much fabric or material to buy plus you can call the store to determine whether the pattern is in stock and ask to hold it for pickup let's get to it at the top of the left column are the suggested fabrics for A, B, C and D, matching pictures A, B, C and D. Further down is the highlighted notions, which is actually the extras. You will notice that some patterns have inches on the left and centimeters on the right. And in French, doesn't matter, just compare the same word or column to the right and you'll figure it out. Next is the body measurements. Unless you have a sausage dog or dash hund, the mid body girth and back length will be enough to measure for this purpose. According to my dog's measurements, I will need the size medium pattern for him. Remember, it might not be a perfect fit, but you can make adjustments, which I will show you. I didn't need interfacing for this purpose. Then, because I'm making coat D, going down to the last column, I will need fabric for the outside of the coat, the contrast, the batting, and the collar and binding. So with your finger under the highlighted M, go down to the last column where it says D coat. Now look at the right column where the fabric width is highlighted. You will see 115 centimeter wide and 150 centimeter wide. Now go to the next picture in the video. Can you see in the middle of the label is the width of the fabric indicated, which in this case is 145 centimeters wide. That is close enough to 150. So I would need 70 centimeters of the fabric. Then it says coat contrast, which is also 70 centimeters. And for the contrast color and binding you will need 80 centimeters. You do get quilted fabric but I will show you how to make your own and be very creative in that way. Have a look at the other video I have about which fabric is safe to buy for children and animals. If you don't have a measuring tape, use some string or a shoelace and then measure along a ruler. Here's a list of the extras I used. The embroidery needles have nice big eyes and the magic needles just needs the thread to slide in. On the instruction sheet I'm looking at picture D and to the right of it all the highlighted pattern pieces for picture D. In the right bottom corner is an example of the cutting layout of the pattern pieces on the fabric. For the different sizes. 
on the next instruction sheet is code D with steps 1 to 11 which I will refer to as we go. As you can see the pattern pieces are quite wrinkled on the pattern sheet. I like to iron the pattern sheet with a medium hot iron to get a nice flat layout on the fabric. There are two sizes printed in one pattern. Don't get rid of the size you won't need, rather trace it and keep it. To trace the pattern piece you need, you can use white or brown paper, a tracing wheel, medium weight soft fabric for the holes to punch through and a hard surface to work on which is not your mum's timber dining room table and some weights to keep it in place hard to see but there's the trace pattern piece remember to write the information with all the notches and symbols on it as well extend it should you need to according to your dog's back measurement. I use the side plate for nice round corners and also fold the pattern in half to trace the same corner on the other side. There is the traced pattern with the cutout notches where the collar will match. Enough fabric to fit the pattern piece which is going to be quilted. Fold the fabric into a triangle which will divide the bottom right corner and have the edges even at the right as you can see at line 31. Rub it with your hand to create a fold line. Open it and draw a line in the fold with a ruler and a piece of leftover bath soap. Do the same on the other side. Draw parallel lines as guidelines for quilting. Mine are spaced two and a half centimeters. This beautiful batting keeps the fabric from sliding. You might need pins depending on the size or surface of the fabric though. It is one and a half by 1.14 square meter and that's enough for the large size in this project as well. So there you have the three layers cut to the size of the navy fabric plus extra yellow for the binding. The following is a quilting demonstration of the bigger project. Referring to step one and two on the instruction sheet. Start from the middle and work your way outward and in the same direction to prevent a rumpling or creased surface and use a stitch length of about three. This is a handy accessory to have and is called an edge or quilting guide. It is usually used on light colored fabric where you would not be able to see the marked lines.
just to show how creative you can be. If you want to sew creative stitches, do so in the second round, otherwise you will be sewing the straight stitches over the decorative ones. If you don't have an edge or quilting guide, here's a plan. Use an allen key and attach it to the presser foot with a plastic bag fastener. or use fabric with printed lines or squares as guidelines. Trace the pattern to indicate where you need to quilt to save some time and thread. When you cut out on the fabric, make sure the center of the pattern matches the center of the squares or design. The reverse side is just as pretty and can also be used. Try it on your dog to see where it overlaps and mark it accordingly. Careful with the pins. Also whether it is long enough, which in this case is too long. Mark where it has to be and adjust accordingly. That's better. Referring to step five on the instruction sheet. I used fake leather for the one side of the collar and sticky tape to hold the pattern in place. You can use pins, just make sure that it is pinned in the seam line, otherwise you will see holes in the collar. Make sure to sew the same seam width 
as indicated on the pattern piece or described on the instruction sheet also where it needs to be sewn use a leather machine needle or a jeans needle for this purpose I used a size 100 or 16 jeans or denim machine needle trim and clip the edges as shown to prevent bundle up Make sure the corners are neatly shaped when turned inside out. To prevent the fabric from curling around and showing at the edge, you need to sew an understitching about 2 mm from the edge, as shown on the side which you don't want to see. Referring to step 7 up to 10 on the instruction sheet. I find a 3.5 cm binding strip works better, especially if the fabric you are working with is a bit thicker than usual. Adjust the pattern accordingly. Who said you wouldn't need maths for sewing? The length will stay the same, but the width will be three times three and a half in other words ten and a half centimeter wide make sure the piece sticking out there where the measuring tape is is three and a half centimeter as well as on the other side where the yellow pin is that will give you a continuous strip of three and a half centimeter when cutting all the way around magic You do get bias tape makers, but it limits you to certain widths. The advantage is that you would be able to steam iron without getting your fingers burned. Just push one end through the bias tape maker and pin the end to the iron board to hold it in place. Pulling away from the pin, it will shape the fabric ready for ironing. Otherwise, Manually just fold both ends to the middle and iron without steaming. Fold the bias binding strip with about one millimeter sticking out that when you sew to be sure to catch the bottom half in the stitched line. Whilst ironing, steam iron the collar on the fabric side. Match the notches of the collar on the quilted piece and make sure the collar is in place when overlapping as it will be once the fasteners are sewn on. You don't want the collar to overlap.
open the belt in place and look whether it won't obstruct your dog's waterworks and whether there's enough room for walking or running. Referring to step 3 and 4 on the instruction sheet. Because I'm using the quilted fabric for the belt as well, I left it to this stage. Pin the hook and loop tape or velcro on the edge of both pieces, making sure that when they cling to each other, the same color will face the top. And then using the zipper foot, sew the tape through all layers. And so the edges of the binding with an overhand stitch. Step 11. Finally, I cut out the belts shorter according to my dog's measurements and prefer having it on the reverse side in order to have continuous binding showing on the right side of the coat as you will see comparing to step 11 on the instruction sheet. This is what it will look like in step 11. The pattern does allow wearing it to the reverse side. Cute this way as well. And this is how I prefer having it. Now for sewing the binding all the way around.
reinforce at the edges of the collar. With the needle still in, lift the pressure foot and turn at the round edges. Reinforce the binding at the edges of the belt as well. Voila! So amazing! Just to finish off, overhand stitches again. And there's the end result.